Ladies and gentlemen, we are now back at the live stream and we are so fortunate to be able to interview Philip Schroeder. So I have some questions that we have received from The Economist, from the Eastern European office, and we're going to ask Philip and see what his responses are. So Philip, how will the European, European market be affected if Britain leaves EU, if we have this Brexit as it's called? It's, it's going to be a disaster for two reasons. I think it's worse for the UK uh, to actually exit uh, the common market in a sense. But what is really scary is that it might lead to disintegration of the entire European concept. And nations like Denmark, uh, smaller countries like Denmark or Bulgaria, that actually really dependent on a, on a single well-functioning market. And if that disintegrates, it's a disaster for businesses across Europe. And why is it that the British people cannot see this? Why, uh, why is it that they believe that Brexit is the right thing for them, do you think? I think the big mismatch in the Brexit debate is really that uh, the UK as an economy understands uh, that it matters to be part of a larger market, but they're also uh, offended and uh, scared of some of the other trends, like migration, uh, like tax evasion, other issues, where it feels it could be comfortable to regain control of certain policy areas. But having said that, what you sort of overlook in the British debate is, in the UK debate is, that there's a high price to pay. That is future growth in the UK, which will slump. We're going to see a huge devaluation. We're going to see severe consequences for the UK economy. So how do you believe that the EU and the UK now should, should resolve this? How should we solve this issue? Well, first of all, it, it remains a horror movie until the vote is cast. Mm. Um, uh, in, in, the, in the case of a, basically a stay vote, uh, this will still be damage to Europe because it sort of has emphasized the idea that you could exit. Uh, in the case of a no vote, we're going to see that major devaluation in the UK. We're going to see shock waves of economic turmoil across Europe. And worst case, in a country like Denmark, we might start a debate, should we also opt for an exit? Because it's so easy to build anti-European arguments nowadays, and it's so tough to argue correct the economics and business case for integrated Europe. So one of the reasons why they want to leave EU is because they believe that they can also have this free trade agreement with the United States. And currently EU and United States are also trying to find a free trade agreement, the TTIP. So how do you think that this is going to, to fix into the problem? I, honestly, I think that's a bit of a, of a, of a, of a wishful thinking, uh, because if you think about it, the, the biggest challenge that you have uh, in, in terms of integrating the UK economy is not free trade and goods it's free trade in services. And it's unthinkable that the UK should be able to negotiate a, a proper service free trade, let's say with Europe, let alone with the US. And, and the, structure, the, the structure of the UK economy is very service heavy. Uh, just think of the financial district in the city of London. So basically, by why would anyone in Frankfurt uh, accommodate special regulatory requirements from the UK. Obviously, if you would be a Frankfurt-based financial institution, you would do everything possible to avoid having the UK competition on that market. So to, to remain or gain access on services, just, just like financial services, it's impossible in Europe, it's going to be even more difficult vis-a-vis -vis the US. Another critique of the European Union from Britain's are that they simply put too much regulation on the standards of products, for instance, whereas in the US they have much lower standards. So how far do you believe that the Europeans should go in regulating standards for products in the European Union? I think the way forward in terms of regulation is a mutual recognition. So whenever uh, US authorities say this car is safe for road transportation, in Europe, we should say the same. Mind you, in, in one area, there is this mutual recognition, and that is in air traffic. And as a matter of fact, an airplane that is allowed to land and start in the UK, uh, sorry, in the US, is automatically allowed to start and land and be operated in Europe. So if we can agree on mutual recognition in air traffic, why can we not uh, agree on mutual recognition on the way seat belts are fastened within cars, uh, in the way that uh, food products should be uh, uh, dealt with, or let alone how uh, insurances, financial systems should be integrated. So I think the, the, the biggest uh, dilemma here is that there are special interests and fighting down special interests, it's much tougher than cutting tariffs. Thank you, Philip. And that was all from the live stream here in the break. We'll see you when the uh, participants arrive and when we'll have the panel debate. Thank you from here.